So yeah, welcome to this uh, post comment of my world record run. Um, I got so pissed off by the game <laughs> that I decided in, in the actual run to uh, to yeah mute myself, and I was like, dude, like, like it was uh, it was an offline run, but online. <laughs> that's that's basically it. I don't know. So yeah, also, this is pretty loud. Is it possible? Let's make it a little bit more quiet. This sounds okay. Like the audio isn't even that important. It's uh, it's there. <laughs> Can't do anything about it. So yeah, this this post th this shouldn't be a tutorial. Um, if you're actually interested in, in speedrunning this, there uh, there is a tutorial. For this, you can look it up on I don't know on speedrun.com in the in the guides uh, tab for for this game, or uh, directly on YouTube. Sense of time and it presents the simplest tutorial. Um, pretty sure you will you'll find it if you look it up yourself. Um, so I, I won't, I won't explain everything, everything that happens, most of the stuff is, are just little tricks, Move, this game is basically movement, so if you want to get a time that low, sub 30 is, like it's not, it's not godlike, as you can see my predicted time, and I'm getting some glots, so I, so 126 is possible, but it's insanely hard to get a consistent movement, and failing zero tricks, over the whole, uh, yeah, over the whole runtime. So sub 130. Yeah, you gotta know. <laughs> is this swag commentary? That's uh, that's a pretty good question. Yeah, I'm uh, having having chat open here, but of course it's it's uh, not in the video because I want to focus more on the run. Um, if the people in my chat are having annotations on stuff, what I could say there, should say there would be interesting or something and um, just tell me I guess <laughs> I'll try to implement that um, yeah I think I will comment that like like it would be a yeah like a marathon a run um, the basic movement in any percent you can guess that by the title of that run uh, zipless so the basic movement of any percent is called a zip it's a kind of a teleportation thing um, and it dominates the whole any percent run. Like you're doing four minutes platforming until you have the dagger, and then it's pro it's it's zipping until the end. There's there's nothing else. Mm. So this category zipless focuses a little bit more on on movement, um, a little bit more platforming, on fighting. Why stream so early? Because it because I'm it's it's 14 <laughs> like it's 2 p.m. What the fuck, Ray? What the fuck? So yeah, for for people who saw any per like watching any percent is really cool, but running it can get uh, yeah kind of monotone I guess. Um, so there, there's a lot more different stuff, <laughs> different uh, techniques and and strats in this run, but there's also so much more bullshit that can happen, and um, I think we'll see two or three. Uh, Kind of bullshits in this run, like nothing too big, of course. Then wouldn't be sub 30, but <laughs> early. Um, but yeah, we'll see what what can go wrong, and I will try to point that out. All. So here's uh, the first big skip of the game. If you saw this game at uh, AGDQ or SGDQ, wow, I I actually failed that once. Wow, I'm sucking so hard. <laughs> um, that's no problem. Five seconds is nothing. Kill the run if you're five minutes behind, but else everything's cool. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going towards the dagger backwards. We're kind of backtracking. And we're not ta picking the dagger up. We're, uh, we are hitting a trigger. So the game thinks we have the dagger. And the next area is triggered. Tutorial? No, it's not, not a tutorial. It, right, it's more like uh, a yeah, post combat marathon run, something like that. Um... So we hit the trigger, the game thinks we have the dagger, and the next version of the corridor is loaded and we we get here. Um, no worries, we, st we have the dagger. We don't have sense, but that's no problem, because in Zipless we have to do this fight. So we're getting our sense back without a problem. But in 80%, it still saves time, but not that much, because you have to get some sand back. 
um, to to zip through the door and yeah. But I don't want to talk about uh, about any percent zips that much. And more about zippers. And this fight is the is the easiest. There are a, a lot of different f fighting techniques in this game. Uh, the most basic one works for the easiest enemies. Is you jump over them, you sword slash them once, and you take the sand while pressing dagger. Like it's really just jump over them, sword dagger. You can see that pretty good. The next enemy, like jump, sword once dagger. It's not actually some kind of timing. You just you can press jump sword dagger really fast. It still works because the game kind of stores these movements. Um, so yeah, this is the basic fighting technique. Uh, there are a lot, lot of advanced ones. Um, we mostly use torpedo attacks. Um, let's like attacking by bouncing off the wall, sword first, knocks down uh, some advanced, some kind of heavier enemies. And there's also. Uh, oh, thanks for the host, Robbie. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, there's also a, a power attack. Which knocks down the advanced, but not of not all of the enemies, um, basically in one hit. Basic fighting techniques. Well, it, did I say basic? It's, yeah, it's kind of advanced. Like the basic ones is really jump over them, sword dagger, or jump over them, sword sword, because some enemies are blocking this last dagger, and you have to sword sword to knock them completely down. Then you can take their sand. But this is r not the fighting technique you want to go with. <laughs> At the later, later fights. So yeah, from here on, um, a huge amount of little movements or uh, skips come into play. Like this one, failing once is no problem. You jump there, turn around. Is this Reki? Robbie, this is actually Reki. Believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a. Similar strat in the second guest room, which I, uh, which is like looks pretty easy. It's actually not doable. Like in a run, <laughs> if you do it, it's rip. So there are, yeah, there are a lot of techniques, which are used in segmented runs, but you, it's it's insane to do them in in uh, single segment runs, like this one. Like I'm trying one. I'm doing one or two. You can. You could have also jumped by wall running and jumping on that uh, on that stone fence at the beginning. Mega freeze, yeah, mega freeze is actually a good point because a mega freeze is a yeah the the best fighting technique in the game. It loses eight minutes. No, <laughs> inside joke, no problem. Um, yeah, mega freeze is an attack. Where you um, you need full sand tanks and full half moons. These are the little white moons uh, on, on uh, the right side of the sand tanks. And if all of that is filled, you can do this uh, mega freeze, which we'll do in the elevator. And for that, we need to kill 64 enemies before getting to the elevator. Because not doing it with the Mega Freeze, like it's possible, it's, but it's harder, first more likely to die, and it's Mega Freeze just saves a huge amount of time on elevator. <laughs> Never forget. <laughs> so yeah, um, the first split, like the split will come up in seconds. It's plus eight or something. It's it's an okay first split, as you can see. My glot here is nine oh eight, but. Uh, uh, 901, not 901. But for that, everything has to be perfect. Like sub nine is possible, but 8, 858 is basically, I think, the maximum you can get there. So yeah, that's an okay first split. Um, the main skip technique used in this run is called a rewind trick, and I think this run uses five rewind tricks, five or six, with this backup one, which I fucked up later on seven. But <laughs> we'll see that. Kribben. Yeah, bye Kribben. Thanks for staying this whole 9 minutes 38 seconds. <laughs> That's cool. This actually was a really huge skip. Torpedoing um, onto that lower door frame. 
Let's just skip all of this room, which takes super long and cutscenes and scareps and fights. Nobody needs a shit. So we skip that. Say I don't know, one, two minutes. Probably, I'm pretty sure two minutes. Two minutes is accurate. Um, another technique which will come up in a second, which will not really frequently, but sometimes be used during this run, uh, is a lever glitch. Which allows you to move levers instantly. Um, this one is a cutscene skip. Gotta jump off the door frame. And on your way back, you should not walk to the right because the cutscene trigger, like it's still there, uh, would lose 10 15 seconds. It's, it's not super long, but it's cool to skip. In case er er anyone is asking, this is German. Um, if you know the game in, in the English version, this guy is super fucking shouty. <laughs> in German, it's it's moderate. It's like he's still loud, but it's not as horrible as uh, in the English version. So yeah, the fear of most runners <laughs> when running this is palace defense, and I can kind of understand them um, because it's pretty early in the game, and the run is likely to die after that at some point, um, mostly in the beginning. Of, of the run attempts, like a first 50 run attempts or so. And if you fail after Palace Defense, you have to do it again and again and again. And uh, like the first few times, if you're still learning this, getting better movement, it's cool. Uh, later on, it gets really boring. <laughs> um, but with the lever glitches I mentioned, this, at least for me, and in my opinion, this puzzle is becoming fun again. That was defense, yes. Um, yeah, this is becoming a lot more fun again. Because, as you can see here, it's a not super challenging trick, but it's... Yeah, it's, it's a cool thing. Saves... Uh, saves some seconds for, for the cutscene, and for moving the platform, and for walking to the uh, to the switch. Or to the pressure plate. It kind of sums up. So you have a fun and kind of challenging trick in a super boring puzzle, which makes it acceptable again. How this trick basically works is, um, if you're not standing right in front of the lever and you're pressing the the spe spe special button, uh, the game will automatically kind of teleport you. So the prince is right in front of the lever and grabbing it. And this teleport fucks up if your angle is too big. <laughs> this is SGDQ killer. <laughs> Thanks for asking. So yeah, this last one is just to bring the platform up. It's not saving this much time. Um, normally if this glitch right before a pleasure pressure plate fails, um, then I'm rewinding it. But... This last one saves maybe two seconds. It's just the, the distance to walk from there to to the end of the round platform. It's one or two seconds, not not worth it. So rewinding this doesn't make sense. Like if it works, cool. If it doesn't work, rip. Sonnentag bereuen, an den den Palast von Azahan angegriffen haben. If you're playing the game casually, or doing your first run attempts of this, and and you watch this after doing I don't know two, three, four runs, you will notice a kind of certainty in my movement. Well, of course I did 350 fucking runs of this, <laughs> and 500 runs in any percent. So it's it's like in every game, but movement is a is a even m more huge thing than in other runs in other games. So it's all really smooth, but uh, mastering it is not a thing you're doing in 10 runs. So if you're... Like my first run of this was 2 hours and 20 minutes. Then I got down to 150, 140, and with the runs it, it became better. Here is a segmented strat which you can try in single segment. If it fails you lose 5 to 10 seconds. If it works, like here, 
you're saving 20 or 25, I'm not exactly sure. Um, there's also a better version, because as you see, you have to open the door. Um, there's a version where the prince jumps to the right, and you can also skip this, uh, this cutscene you just saw. There's five more seconds. I would say it's, uh, it's, it's a segmented trick, because the chance of getting it, like, you, you're getting it if, if the prince is looking towards, I don't know, like, there's a range of three or four pixels for, for this. <laughs> easy pantry, yeah, it's easy, like, I don't know, I don't know what, what's the problem? <laughs> it's easy. Um. <laughs> so, if you don't get it in a run, it's no problem, it shouldn't be required to get a good time. Um, you can get sub 130 without doing palm tree, as you will see, because I I lost the three places where I lost kind of exactly one minute. <laughs> so yeah, but I will point it out later. Um, of course, this better version of palm tree saves more time, so my glot is more advanced than uh, this one. But it's still an okay time save. Um, Runs with pantry skip normally die at some point. <laughs> this one was just lucky. Ray. Yes, Ray. Thanks for uh, stopping by. See you later, I guess. So the upcoming is dead fight, and there are some of the advanced fighting techniques will be used, like I pointed out. And first of all. I have a question. Did the prince just stab himself? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bullshit. Like if you take a sword out before a cuts in the the weapons will stick to its hands and he's stabbing himself in the face. <laughs> okay, the red guys are uh, this was a mistake. You normally sword dagger them, as you will see now. Like the red guys are, um, are sort of easy enemies. The blue guys are enemies who block a jump over them. So, as you can see, um, the power attack or the torpedo attack, which will not be used because it sucks. <laughs> because our aim in this game is really bad. Um, yeah, the red guy is easy. For the power attack, you have to s see where the prince is focusing after taking an enemy sand. And you can pawn power attack only him. If you're not targeting him, nice block. <laughs> and okay. If you're not targeting him with your power attack, you'll have to do an extra kick. Because power attack has to happen after some kind of movement. Another thing that can happen, as you can see here, and that's another really cool combo, and also saving a bit of time, you can jump over knockdown enemies, like knocked down by Farah or knocked down by yourself sometimes by accident, <sighs> and you only press dagger. Uh, the enemy will collapse, the prince will take a sand with the dagger, and the prince will be able to. Um, I will say something regarding that in a second. Principal. I cancelled the animation early, so jump over knockdown enemies and dagger is kind of fast. So yeah. Um for the dead we are doing slowdown, still in landscape view, because if you're not in landscape view, the camera can fuck up badly and it, it basically bullshit. So you slow down, jump over that sword dagger, because with a slow-mo he becomes an easy or a basic enemy. So what happened here is a crash on purpose, because we have a save point, and after the save point there's a 30-40 seconds cutscene. And by crashing the game and reloading the save, we can skip the cutscene. And it still saves 20 seconds or so. It, it saves kind of, uh, quite something. This will be used again later in the run. Uh, Around about 55 minutes. She is ruling over the chat today. He is here. Yeah. 
What's happening here is, uh, is another fight skip. Where you let Pharaoh die, but just before Pharaoh dies, you activate a checkpoint by turning the switch around. Um, so we skip the fight. Pharaoh's dying because you're not in the area you're supposed to be. So the game is like, dude, no, no. <laughs> you will get f punished for that and... Yeah, in this case, they're actually saving you. And reload. Yeah, this jump was not optimal. There's a jump which goes slightly more to the right and where the prince doesn't grab that stone fence thing. And yeah, that's that's kind of experience. Experience in yourself. Up until here, the run mostly was fighting, it was movement, but not no major tricks or major skips. Which are correlated to a rewind trick or which are too hard. Um... So there were not that many things different from the old AGDQ and SGDQ runs in 2012 from Mike from uh, Mike Yama, the old world record holder for this. His time was 140, 29. But because of uh, a huge load of skips and time savers, which were found dur during the last two years, uh, the time went down this much. Warehouse is a good example of how insane you can go. Uh, insane you can go. There is a segmented strat which saves 20 seconds over the normal way, um, but executing in a run, I would say the chance of getting is 40 f or 50 percent. And there also was an old strat here, which was replaced by a newer one, which loses five seconds but gives you more consistency. Because there are quite some run killers, uh, not even tricks, but the game itself, um, Pharah following you can be so annoying sometimes and, ac and actually killing your run. Rip prints. <laughs> sometimes you can drop down and roll away immediately and I wasn't l that lucky. So what you can do, you, uh, right, you can go on that last platform where I stepped on, you can wall run to the right and get a double rewind trick. Um, a double rewind trick to get to the other side instead of doing all this all this uh, running thing there the problem is at least th this was the problem for me um, as I said this was a 50% uh, chance of getting so many runs died here and became quite annoying so I'm thankful for the more consistent method it loses 5 seconds but it, it, lets, it lets your run live and that's actually an important thing, at least for me. Consistency is basically the word of speedrunning. And also, um, with the new method, you have still a four cents here. Rewind trick uses the rewind system, obviously, so you lose sand. Um, this skips an enemy trigger, so you can continue without enemies bothering you. And this jump is unintended. It's not like it's precise. It's not super pixel precise, but. Yeah, four, five, six, seven pixels like that. And because it took some shortcuts, Pharaoh will drop down, but you still have the checkpoint. Down there, so she'll respawn there and you can continue. This is the new method I was talking about. Um, in the old method, you have to uh, activate a platform by moving this crate. You can see, uh, you could see. You can't see, you could see on the left side of the screen. You have to move that down, uh, get back up, then you can reach the button. It's really time costly. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, this torpedo was some kind of advanced movement. Torpedoing into cutscene or rolling into cutscenes is faster. Because even if the cutscene locks your movement, the movement like a r like uh, a roll or a torpedo will still be done. So you gain some distance in a cutscene where you normally can't move. So what you saw in the uh, warehouse in the down warehouse at the bottom bottom there was a rewind trick, which is basically there's more to it, but it's basically rewinding twice to a same point, 
So your action gets enlarged, maybe. Maybe you can say that. Also for the slow mos we go into landscape view because slow mos suck. And sometimes enemies are teleported or are teleporting to Farah, so you have to go to Farah, kill them, go back to uh, to the safe point. And that that's basically RNG. You can try to manipulate it, but it's not 100% sure. So yeah, this can lose quite some time. The beginning of the split is really good, and this landscape view method. I jump on the fence by doing a landscape view method. I'm the only one. I don't get why I'm the o or I was the only one doing that because it's super consistent. Like if any other runners here, <laughs> any other ziplers around at the moment, why? What? Why is no one doing this? It's consistent as fucking fuck. <laughs> Needs no major setup. You like you just go to that corner, landscape, jump, ready, done, done. <laughs> okay, this skip allowed us uh, to fight some birds. Or to, to slash some birds up there on, at, the, at the fence. Uh, every. Um, or I should say like this birds are slow. <laughs> birds getting down so you can attack them is super slow. Slashing three birds saves 30 seconds. Um, but there's a possibility that you can pressure. This is a cutscene skip. Needs precise camera movement. This was bad. <laughs> You normally can directly jump to the upper pole there. I failed that, but this is 10 seconds, not uh, too bad. So, yeah. Um, birds. Yeah, this, this bird thing can crash. You have to kill the right bird first, and then the two birds on the left. Um, the crash is AI script related. So, if uh, you slash the left bird first, or you kill them simul simultaneously. Uh, the AI script for the left bird flying away is not starting, so it cannot finish and the game gets confused and the game crashes. That should basically be the reason. Um, if you slash all the birds at the same time, you're basically dead. Rip. <laughs> Goodbye game crash. There's not much you can do. You can prevent the crash sometimes by saving at the save point back then, back there, but um, okay. it's not 100% certain and it loses so much time and yeah, it's, it's it's run dead. If you're not doing your first run, it's run dead. Um, here we're going to landscape view just for show off because loading trigger! <laughs> A torch is magically appearing at the wall. Nice. <laughs> this is why I don't do torpedo all the time because as you just saw torpedo failed like the auto aim didn't catch up uh, with the enemy what you can do here for the scarabs there are eight scarabs and um, you kill seven of them so far as killing the eight one while you're opening the door sometimes this works sometimes it doesn't um, so what you can you can torpedo you have with a problem with the auto aim uh, the area is really wide so torpedoing and reaching an enemy, like like going going to the wall, is kind of time costly. You can do power attacks here. Um, there's a decent chance of the scarabs blocking your power attacks. So um, you will get hurt, and your attack won't finish. So what I did in the late runs was fighting them normally. Like the first one with the torpedo. Fighting them normally, Scarab needs three slashes here, three sword attacks, and then the last one with the torpedo. Um, as you can see, I'm actually I'm pretty low health at the moment. If I wouldn't be that low health, I could torpedo over this these spikes, but I don't want to lose sand here for the next rewind trick. So I just did the spikes casually by slowly walking over them but uh, you can torpedo over them that th yeah the torpedoes over that or torpedo in general for movement is an advanced threat um, it should not be done by like you as a be beginner you can do that but you sh should focus on other things first in my opinion like 
Do what you want, I don't care. I'm done with this game. So what you don't want is you don't want to lose sand. Because taking the sand cloud down there, which you saw, in the, yeah, which you see. Um, the sand cloud which refills your sand tanks, the yellow buttons on the left side. Oh, You can jump over the ledge, but I fucking failed. It's annoying. <laughs> So for a Ruan trick you need minimum two cents. Yeah, optimally two cents I should say. And the problems of a rewind trick are like I will try to point them out at, at the next one. The next rewind trick which will save uh, four m three to four minutes by getting the second sword early. Skipping super huge amount of fighting and platform. Like it's maybe save seven or eight minutes even. Overdoing the super casual way. So yeah, this area was done normally. Um, for the next one, like up until this, the baths, where you get the second sword. Uh, your first, and you run the first time you're relying on Farah following you. If she doesn't follow you, you will get a game over. <laughs> if she's getting stuck at a, at the an, uh, at edge at the corner here, corner is the word. Uh, you lose 30 seconds. So I walk through the corridor on the left side. So she's following me on the left side and not getting stuck on the corner. You can see her. There. She followed me. Um, it doesn't work 100% but it works. Good enough to do it. Yeah, this whole area is relying on Farah following you. Yeah, you can no normally roll into the cutscene. I think I was too late or I forgot that. I don't know. I'm going to landscape you here to make sure she's actually following me. And she's not getting stuck in the first area of the baths. Um, now I'm opening her crack. And I'm going to the corridor so she's not in fighting mode anymore and she's actually going to the crack. With, uh, with the first person view, you check if she's uh, going there, of course. Uh... Oh! I actually forgot that Farah <laughs> got stuck at the waterfalls. Um, if he's not coming in five seconds, you just should look after her. So what you want to do here is you want to do a wall run, cancel at the maximum, and rerun twice to the same point. Get an extended wall run and jump off. The problem of a rerun trick is that it sometimes doesn't work. Like you're rewinding to the same point twice, um, and you will you will get nothing. This is like we call that frames, because these are non-rewind trickable frames. You can avoid them by uh, doing a setup. At least that's what what I know about that. You can avoid that by doing a setup, which waits a little longer after you rewind. Um, so yeah, later in, in Well, you will see a method which up until now never gave me frames, never gave me a situation which was not rewind trickable. Um, simply by waiting. Um, and also you can wait until a an, yeah, arbitrary point. You should find a setup or you could copy my setup. Um, which starts the, the rewind at a late time, but I'm always at the at the same point, so it's reproducible. Because the this was actually super good RNG. Normally the. Enemies are blocking you and auto aim, and you can't slash the wall. But this one was super good. Um, the movement on this split is actually insane. I will glot by 15 seconds because everything was, yeah, perfect basically. So sometimes you will um, you will get a rewind trick, but it's not the rewind trick you want um, because the starting point in time. 
for the rewind was not not the right one. You can basically say that, like it's second sword. Um, sometimes because of a wrong starting point, the rewind plays out too long, and the prince will not get up this max wall run thing. But oh, this jump perfect every time. Uh, <laughs> the max wall run thing, but we'll do the flip after a wall run. Because, and this is another problem of the rewind in this game, at least for tricks. The rewind is divided into s yeah into segments. So if you're stopping a rewind, um, at, the, at some point the rewind will go back um, to a... Yeah, what happens here is doesn't save time, it's just style points. So if you don't understand what happens here, it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> Um Where was I? Rewind trick. Um Rewind trick. What what do I want to say? Was I talking about the wrong action you get? Is yeah, into segment. Rewind is divided into segments. So if you're stopping at some point, the rewind will still go back uh, to the next segment. This segment division is related to your rewind starting point. It sounds really complicated. It's basically just rewind. Like it's basically just you have to find out at which point to start the rewind to get a consistent rewind trick and to get the rewind trick you want to get. That's basically basically it. Um, the good thing, if you actually want to run this, <laughs> there are basically consistent setups for every rewind trick there is in this game. Except for Hall of Learning, but that's, let's talk, talk about this later. <laughs> so every, every rewind trick, tongue breaking, fucking shit, um, basically has a consistent setup now. You just have to. Uh, be able to reproduce it to understand the timing in here. I'll try to point out some of the timings here. So what we're doing here is a m thing which you maybe saw on the old Makuyama runs. Um, we're not doing the fight as always. <laughs> or as yeah, not always, but most of the time in Zipless. Um, here I had some bad luck because Ferro was dying. So I had to rewind to relive her. She died, so I rewind it to give her health back. And then she's actually defending herself against enemies. So by going slightly forward and jumping out of the door, Pharaoh will not not continue to lose health as in the old runs or the old method. There Pharaoh had to um, yeah, not die when you do the trick. Here, Pharaoh is not dying at all, so you can just do go into the rubbish. This is another rewind trick. The rewind starts at when the prince hits the bottom. Um, if you start the rewind trick too early, as I said, you can get frames. If you rewind down there, not getting a rewind trick. Ah, oh, lever glitch. Perfect movement. It's so good. <laughs> I love that movement. Sick. Um, so yeah, the rewind trick mm, works 98% of the times by doing this particular setup. Um, what can happen here at this rewind, tri re rewind trick you just saw is that um, sometimes you rewind a little bit too far back um, behind the yeah, behind the by the game noticed uh, start starting point of your jump. Um, if this happens and you get a rewind trick, you will see that the prince just drops down. This is a clear result of rewinding a little bit too far back. But uh, at my rewind trick, there was plenty of plenty of space and time to rewind back. <laughs> nice camera, 
Das ist dreimal What the fuck ist das? So as you, as you saw, uh, you wanna have two cents or more uh, when you jump out of the door just after mess hall, because you have to do a rewind trick. If you don't have two, like if you have zero or one cents, you can still save this, but with this will lose time. Um, you can jump on the drawbridge, triggering triggering the enemies, killing two of them, and then jumping. The big problem is that enemies are. Blocking your way, slashing, or yeah, hitting you, and so you fall off the bridge when you're set up, set up in your jump. It's really, really annoying. <laughs> Stay safe, don't try this. <laughs> so you, you really don't want the enemies to bother you. Um, but this is the only re re rewind trick where this matters. At every other point, there are no enemies around. Okay, second sword. But you can avoid them by um, going to the to another point, and they will follow you. So this split is mostly, aside from one or two changes, um, it's mostly the old route. Um, the old marathon now known route. Like in the next area of the game, um, back then in single segment there was another strat which saves a little bit more time, but it's super hard. <laughs> so there's actually a more consistent way now. Also in case you're wondering, I'm playing on controller and if you're playing this game casually or zipless, play this like seriously. Controller. <laughs> like you plug in your controller, I don't know, piece for Xbox 360 or some fucking shit, I don't know. And you. The re rewind was unnecessary. I thought it would drop down. So I have to take a new sand cloud here. This split in general had some super bad movement. So I'll lose 40 seconds or 50. Oh, now I think actually one minute uh, uh, over my glot. Really bad segment. So yeah, this is the Robolus. <laughs> nice little skip. Saves 20 seconds if I don't fuck up and take the fucking sand cloud. Um, where was I? Uh, old route, a few changes. Old marathon route. What did I want to say? I forgot it. Fuck. Yeah, I don't know what I just want to say. Also, if you guys in the t chat now, uh, if you're ha having questions, you can ask them and... Like, they're probably g good questions. Oh, we're on Twitch. Uh, they're maybe good questions. <laughs> so I'll answer them uh, in, the, in this... Uh, in this post comment. This was a cutscene skip. And this rewind, like I go there to load the next area, but I rewind back because it's faster than going back normally. So this route is actually really safe. If I won't fail it. So we're skipping the whole area like this. Also, this is an advanced uh, strat also. You can pull that lever, so you get a ladder here. Um. I will not do that, you can get down another way. The problem is, as you just saw, or as, yeah, as you just saw, if the prince is not standing on the button while this door opening cutscene plays, uh, the time, yeah, the door open time is so short that there, there's no way to get through. So if you fail that, that's basically rip run. If, if you have, oh. if you don't have sense, of course. So this area up until well is basically 
Little strats which sum up, but no, no super big skip. Just have to know your movement, I guess. Let's just not mention I failed that because it's okay. what? this is a cutscene skip also. At the beginning of that uh, wooden log ball thing, there, there's a cutscene. Pretty long and annoying cutscene, which we can uh, yeah, simply skip. If you're doing this uh, this area normally in your first run, that's no problem, but um, the jumps here are really not that hard, so they should be really easy to learn. Oh, perfect. At least something at this bit didn't suck fucking balls. <laughs> but the rest, yeah, this is one of the splits I really hate in, in PB, or in world record. Well split and um, the prison split later on both lose one minute. Um, all the other splits were all the, all the other splits were I from acceptable do to godlike like Pharaoh's. <laughs> aside from Pharaoh dying, which wasn't my fault, still lost ten seconds. But aside from that, this split cannot be done faster. I don't think so. Or not be much more, not be done much more faster. Much more fast, much faster. Grammar is hard. <laughs> yeah, this is a thing that can happen here. As you saw, the camera sc screwed you over. And, um,. Like, I was doing the same jump as always, holding the same direction on the controller as always, but the game was like, No! I don't fucking care! <laughs> because the camera's fucked up, your relative direction is... Yeah, and you jump to your death. Not that good. Um, what you want to have before well, because there's another rewind trick, you want to have four sands. There's a sand cloud after this section. As you can see there in the background. Um, and what you, what you don't want here is you don't want to die, <laughs> like actually die on, on these poles or the previous poles. Because your checkpoint is pretty far back, not super far back, but 40 seconds far back. So I was actually pretty scared when doing this <laughs> without sense. Um, on controller this is not that big of a threat. Because moving uh, on those poles and on the controller is a lot easier than on keyboard. Because on yeah, on controller you have 360 degrees uh, movement. On keyboard you have four keys and well, if you combine them, eight eight directions. But you first have to figure out which direction to press to uh, pass which pole. It's the like mid thing there. So yeah, at this point you want to have at least two sands. So if you're not comfortable with the little skips after the last sand cloud, I just do this thing casually. Doesn't lose that much time. But you want to have two, better three, optimally four sands here. Yeah, I'm already losing time as you can see the split sucks so much. Cutscene. And now there, there's one little strat. You normally get to the other side by uh, swinging on the rope, but you can just jump there. It's not as precise as, like it's precise but not super precise. This wall run is just style points. It's not faster than going up there on the right side of the of the ledge. Yeah. So. Okay, what you're doing here is we're doing another rewind trick. I'll start the rewind when the when my life. Is at the um, is at the um, maximum, like geometric, geometrically, 
uh, at the maximum. Um, so w let's put it like this: I start the rewind when the when my health bar, the blue part of my health bar, is right above the rewind timer. And by rewinding twice to the same point, we create an invisible ledge. If you're re not rewinding far enough back, the prince will uh, drop down on an on an inv invisible wall. And if you're re rewinding too far back, the prince will stand on the original ledge again. But uh, with this timing, like with this um, setup for when to start the rewind, you get. 85% consistent uh, results. Just have to practice this timing for yourself. Also, little stuff, nice slash. And next fight, I'll actually drink something. If uh, the chat is having questions, just ask them. They could be helpful regarding explaining this run. The next fight is a fight with four enemy waves and a little cutscene skip at the end, which you have to set up. Um, the techniques you're using here are the, the torpedo, actually, because the power attack is not working too good on, too good on the red women. This is why I love the auto aim. I failed to hit the red the woman three times in a row. Like this auto aim is fucking sick. That's so annoying. So you can torpedo everyone in this room, aside from the the brown guy. Well, Stratox, if you don't have any good questions, just ask questions, I guess. <laughs> like just as ask any questions. Which is not regarding Elite Force 1, and then we're in there. <laughs> yeah, this is the second enemy wave. Before the last enemy wave, you will have to um, move a statue back there, which re reveals a uh, crack for Pharah. There, I tried a power attack. Of course, the enemy blocked. Blue guys blocking power attacks is RNG. Like, if they block, you can't do anything. At that fight, that fight they didn't block at all. This was really lucky. So you move this in a enemy wave pause. And you see the last enemy wave. If there are three women, one brown guy and no one else spawning. Like now, there was another woman, another blue guy. This is not the last wave. This is the third wave out of, out of four. This wasn't the best movement, but okay. <laughs> Torpedo, well, let's just jump. Prince is like, okay, I don't fucking care. Sometimes enemies are teleporting to Pharah. Uh, this one, uh, this time I was lucky because Pharah was standing in the middle. Um, normally she's at the at the entrance, at the hole you slashed with your second sword. And if ed enemies are porting towards her, you basically rip. <laughs> See. So you want to kill the last enemy in a particular spot e and you hear Prince saying something and Pharah is walking towards the crack, then you know, uh, then you know, <laughs> I will answer your question in a second, Stradox. <laughs> um, then you save, crash the game, because then you're skipping a cutscene and you're skipping a 15-20 yeah, second segment where Pharah Slowly walks into the crack, talks with you, and then opens the door. You all, all skip that by uh, killing the enemy in this particular spot when the statue is already moved. So this now saved 40 seconds. 35 seconds, 40 seconds, like that. Something like that. 
Uh, how did you rock your exam so hard? Stradox, that's a super good question. Um, it's really important for the run, that's why I'm answering it. <laughs> I was lucky. <laughs> I actually was lucky. Um. <laughs> so yeah, th this was not was another level glitch. Which turns around the mirror in one turn. Save five seconds. If you get it, cool. If you don't get it, well, sucks. <laughs> But it's still okay. Um, another strat we do here is called. Well, first of all, it's a partial fight skip. You're skipping 80% of this fight. And what you're doing uh, is you're doing optimal mirrors. Nice exam strat, yeah. Just have luck. That's basically it. <laughs> so you're killing five enemies. You just get down the sixth, sixth one. Um, what you're doing here, normally after the fight, you're doing a, a mirror puzzle to bring the light beam from the entrance yeah, to the platform in the middle of the room. Nice torpedo auto aim. So you have to move this mirror a little bit precise, like not super precise, but kind of precise. Um, all the other mirror th mirrors are just, yeah, easy. <laughs> also, I like 180 degree torpedoes. They're super cool. So yeah, by putting this one back, because of the setup of this one mirror, you automatically get the good one. Um, saves, I don't know, 10 seconds? It's not, it's not that much, but it's a easy, an easy strat. So it um, can be done. It's kind of an advanced strat. So if, you'd, if you're not an advanced runner, you don't have to do that. Um, here, coming up, is another rewind trick, and this one is the most bullshit one of all time. First of all, you're getting this inverted ledge. Um, then I have a, s a setup which gives me a rewind trick every time. Because I do a sword slash. Like I have a reference point, but I still wait some time before I do the rewind trick. So I get. It doesn't matter which kind of rewind trick I get. I want to transport the rewind trick onto this invisible ledge. So I can move out of this hall, uh, the hall of learning. And this was a really scary thing because I saw, oh, dude, my run is fucking good. And I was, my hands were shaking. <laughs> so I wasn't able to move down here uh, slowly. Like this, this was just lucky. This was nothing but lucky. <laughs> so you, you can transport r rewind tricks. Um, if you know the old runs of uh, old marathon runs of 2012. Nice lot, by the way, by 30 seconds. Cool. Um, if you know the old marathon runs, you will notice that there another strat was done in well. Like you rewind three times when the prince is falling down, and then you rewind up to the ledge. This is basically uh, transporting a rewind trick. You get down there, up to the ledge. Um, this is not necessary except in Hall of Learning. The problem is that doing a rewind trick on a, a platform that can theoretically move and nice and uh, the platform in the middle of Hall of Learning what is as we saw able to move so getting a rewind trick on the normal ledge not on the inverted one um, it's super hard, so the strat is there to teleport the rewind trick to another point, and there's no known at this point, known better known method or no known better method for getting an invisible ledge as this. Also, Hall of Learning skip is one of the newer findings that was found uh, one month ago, two months ago. Like it's really not that far uh, in the past. Still a really cool strat. What we do here is we die because Farad was, of course, not able to follow us. <laughs> and by dying, she's getting reloaded, as you can see in a second. So we're skipping all over the room by going onto the ledge and wall run. And as you can see, she's there. If you don't die and reload, 
Like if, if you don't save, die and reload, saving is important because you don't have a checkpoint after the fight. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, if Ferris is not with you, you will get a game over and do everything again. Rip. So because of the skip we were going from the bottom to the top, we are normally supposed to be at the top after doing the puzzle here and then slide down to the bottom. Also this is to get... Like this is to load the corridor, which was not loaded in the cutscene. And then I run back until the prince is on the rope so I can just slide down. I don't know how much this saves, but <laughs> it's cool. So as you can see, we're, we're, we were supposed to open the door and then get down. And if you get down, these ropes, the prince goes like, ah, <laughs> it makes kind of sense, but if you go in the wrong way, it's just fucking bullshit. <laughs> Dialogue at least. Hall of Learning, skip, saves three and a half to four minutes over the the old speedrun route and saves a huge shitload of time <laughs> over the casual route like seven minutes, eight, I don't know, it's a really huge skip um, made consistent by Epic Dude Guy and Esco the guys <laughs> the guys for finding stress in this game the zipless gods <laughs> From now on, there are still some some skips. One kind of one, two, three kind of huge skips, but no um, no skip as huge as Hall of Learning. So I hope you enjoyed Hall of Learning because no skip this big is <laughs> still to come. Um, also, by landscape viewing, you can move in that cutscene. Like you can extend your roll save one second or so. Because the camera angles combined with the cutscenes are really broken sometimes, so this can be a thing. Here we're doing a, a max wall run. Like it's it's a wall run um, where you stop right before the prince would flip, and by cancelling the prince gets some little like a little amount of extra height, extra height, not height. But it's not getting hated. Um, of extra height. And because of that, the skip works. Like, if the skip doesn't work, if you're running up the palm tree and not grabbing the, uh, the, the ledge or the. I don't know, the beam. Um, it's probably because your wall run wasn't a max wall run. This segment also was, it wasn't perfectly executed, but was, it had good execution. So I will glot again on this. And the goal of this whole run, and all the, the runs in the past week, past two or three weeks, um, the goal was to get sub-130. Um, the sum of best said, dude, this is possible. But there are so much, so, uh, so many little strats, so many big skips, which can fuck up and cost you, like a fatal rewind trick in in up, uh, in Hall of Learning, costs you one minute. Uh, fatal rewind trick in well costs you thirty to forty seconds. At second sword you lose twenty to thirty seconds. It kind of sums up. So if a consistent or kind of consistent setup fails, which is likely to happen in a run because of doing six, seven rerun tricks, uh, the chance for that kind of sums up. Um, yeah, this is likely to lose some time, and the rerun trick which failed in this run is the prison one, which lost one minute and five seconds, I think. 
think I actually timed that. This room entry right here is uh, the newest one. At least the, this method is the newest one. As you will see, I fail this and I do a backup strat, which loses one minute. But this, the backup strat itself is inconsistent, <laughs> and the new strat is consistent. And I just fucked that up. Um, yeah, nice one. So for prison we're doing, as I said, another rewind trick. Um, this is a actually an, an interesting rewind trick because it, um, yeah, it enlarges or it it, it extends your action. But you're not really doing an action. <laughs> um, you're getting pushed down by a mov moving platform. You will see what I mean in a, in a second. So we we're right above the door. We're standing at the end of this platform, and we're rewind tricking this drop down. And normally the prince gets pushed a little bit forward. Um, I stopped the rewind a little bit too early, so I didn't get pushed in all the way, it failed and I had to go down and do the normal way. Um, yeah, but normally the prince will get pushed into the wall, not too much, this is important. So uh, he lands on the door frame and you, you don't die from fall damage, but you can just take, take a step forward and go into the corridor. This saves doing uh, this button thing here. Which you will see in a second. The old method, like the new method, saves um, 5 or 10 seconds over the old method, but it's more consistent. It normally is. What you can do here is you can re rewind trick a button. You n never should do that. This should always be a backup strat. <laughs> because getting it, like, like I got it, is no, 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 no. Chances of that are basically fucking zero. <laughs> yeah. Also, I wanted a backup stand here for the traps in the corridor because the if the corridor traps kill you, you go back to the beginning of prison. These ones and these have a y really huge damage. Or well, these are dealing a huge amount of damage. So you should avoid them. Or if you can avoid them, at least have a backup set. So yeah, this this is this rewind trick which pushes you into the wall and you drop down on the door frame. Um, it's not that hard if you do it with the setup you just saw. It's I would say 85 to 90 percent, uh, and yeah, as I said, the chance of failing one rewind re trick sums up. And then this run, it was prison which failed. It's okay. Keep in mind, my goal was sub 130, so I had to save one minute 43 seconds over the whole run. So losing one minute on this split is still okay if I don't majorly fuck up endgame. <laughs> Uh, and endgame are the last two splits of this uh, of this run. Also, what you're seeing in uh, five to uh, in ten seconds is the last, the actually last rerun trick of the game. Because in f say six, seven, eight minutes, and uh, the prince will lose the dagger because Pharaoh steals it. Spoiler. So we can't rewind anymore. A possible problem here is that right after the cutscenes the enemies are attacking you, if you're low health, you should heal up at some point <laughs> before prison or before, like, p heal up, seriously, do it. Or you just hope that the enemies are not fucking over, and fucking you over. What you can do there is you, right after the button cutscene, you 
what 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 was that? <laughs> right after the button cutscene, you can slow motion, and it increases the chance of not dying, but this chance is not 100%. I think I wanted to make sure that Pharaoh's following me, but that's not necessary. If you're taking the sand cloud, it's not necessary. Because she'll keep up. If you're not taking the sand cloud, you should uh, you should check her. Check for her. Um, to be fair, there's no point in, in not taking the sand cloud. Because you want to do the mega freeze I mentioned earlier. And the sand cloud fills up, as you can see now. The sand cloud fills up your sand tanks, the yellow ones, and the moon tanks. Uh, called power tanks. The, the white ones. And after the rerun trick, they're normally not filled up. So you want to take the sand cloud so you can uh, speed up that fight by a huge amount of time. As you will see now. Yep. Actually, oh, I, I already did a Mega Freeze. <laughs> I forgot that. I did it after Hall of Learning in Observatory. I forgot that. Yeah, you already saw a, re uh, a Mega Freeze. Three. <laughs> Three. Because of the huge amount of enemies, what you can do here or. Um, what's most likely to happen is that you mega freeze once, take eight cents, because one cent, uh, one enemy is giving you half a um, half a slow mo tank, moon tank. So eight enemies are refilling your moon tanks, and then you can do, and you probably will do, a second mega freeze. Also, what you want here is you want to. Oh wow, nice. Um, you want to keep the f camera away from Farah because then uh, the enemies are more likely to not attack her and she's not dying. Uh, Farah dies in the elevator fight, you're basically rip. Like, no, don't, you don't want to do that, seriously. Please. Yeah, I could have loaded the segment by 10 seconds with the good rerun trick, but yeah. Yeah, I hit Pharaoh there because uh, when I did the run, I had chat open. It wasn't in the stream, but someone was like, is this pre-recorded? <laughs> it was not pre-recorded, but um, he said, if this is not pre-recorded, pre please hit Pharaoh now. And I did so <laughs> to prove it. Nice. Nice. Okay. Sometimes you wall run and getting bullshitted. Um, because the prince is getting blocked by magical air blocking blocking air. I have no idea. <laughs> so if you hear your run is has a huge chance of getting finished. Because in endgame, um, as I said, Pharaoh will take the dagger off you. But the good thing is that there are no more human tricks which can fuck up. There are little movement tricks, but nothing too big. So your only fear is dying. The first time in the run your fear is dying. <laughs> After doing 83% with a dagger where you can just rerun if you die. So new runs are normally scared here. And... Advanced runners are scared here if their run is good. <laughs> like I was super nervous because your yeah, sub on thirty is was such the hype hype thing. I was like, dude, this pace is sick. I can get it if I don't suck major dick now. <laughs> let's let's call it by the name. And you will see my huge amount of nervosity. Um, in two, three, and th in, I think in three and a half. Yeah, in four minutes. Let's say in four minutes. Because first there's a cutscene which takes two and a half minutes. This cutscene, you can't skip it. You only can skip uh, movies, pre-rendered cutscenes in this game. And mm, 
and the next puzzle, you can't die there. So. Yeah, after that cutscene in the puzzle, then the real scary endgame begins. Um. Also, endgame is only partially scary because they are uh, in this uh, second half of the endgame. There are so many checkpoints. Dying loses five seconds, maybe ten, but not too much. If you die at the beginning or in the first third of endgame after this magical puzzle uh, coming up. You lose a minute and basically the run, if you're aiming for a good time. So this is why Endgame can be so scary. One little movement mistake and you're dead. So you really want to know what you're doing here. <laughs> for, anything in if, uh, for anybody interested in any percent? Mm. And any percent, because of a skip, um, using the zip glitch, um, you you keep the dagger, and in endgame you're still doing zips, you're still doing strats, you're still doing skips. Because this zip glitch, like rerun tricks, abuses the rerun system. But in uh, zipless, we cannot avoid losing the dagger. So yeah, in any in any percent, it's not it's not as scary, but you still have to do some uh, some fucked up strats. And if you fail one of them, uh, if you don't have sand in a point where you want to have sand for doing a zip, um, yeah, that's that's basically a death. <laughs> Cause it loses too much time. Um, but in Zipless, we are doing this magical puzzle. If you played this at any point casually, you maybe will have noticed. Um, like if you played this as a, as a child, you may have noticed that that what the fuck happens here. <laughs> when I first played this, or the the first ten times I played this casually, um, I didn't know how the fuck this puzzle works. Um, how it works is you can hear that maybe. Yeah, well. And uh -huh. Oh, I hope you didn't get scared. So you heard some water splashing, water falling. And uh, this this sound of water droplets marks the right door. Of course, in any uh, of course in Zipless you're not uh, you're not hearing <laughs> the droplets. You just know which door to attend. Uh, this is not RNG. This is pre predestined predestination. Another huge thing is that before the last door, before the cinematic, you draw your sword, as you saw there. Um, now in this movie you lost your dagger and your sword. But... Um, but because you drew the sword for the cutscene, the prince is still in this state. So the prince, you you will see that the prince is, um, yeah, standing there like he has, still has weapons in his hand. You can clearly see that. So they're invisible, and you're currently in a state of not being able to draw your sword. Like if you jump or wall run, where the prince automatically uh, puts the sword back, you cannot redraw it. So what you want to do? Be really careful. What you can do is block. If an enemy is hitting you, you can block. Um, also, you can normally use your sword. You can use it after combos, as you saw, after uh, jumping off a wall. You can use your sword while torpedoing. So. Uh. Yeah, you just skipped a 30 second puzzle. At least in speedrun it's 30 seconds, in casual it's sometimes 10 <laughs> minutes <laughs> how to get the last sword. But uh, yeah, we still have a sword, you wanna heal up here, 
for the last fight. And here you can see my nervosity. Um, if you fail this wall run and this little, like it saves 10 seconds. If you fail this, you lose one minute. And you fail this by not being in the right position when you start the wall run. And I adjusted that for two, three, four, five seconds. Um, clear sign of nervosity. Here is the first checkpoint, so now I was totally chilled again. But if you die before the checkpoint, you will respawn in the tomb. And you won't have your sword, your invisible sword drawn. So you will have to, you will have to do the last sword puzzle. Maybe it loses more with it. Maybe it loses one minute, thirty, two minutes. It's it's a run killer. If your time is more advanced. Also auto aim is saving your ass a huge amount of times during the run. By grabbing something you're not supposed to grab, but auto aim. <laughs> Okay, scary thing here is that bats on this ledge, like it's a, it's a perfect, uh, not ledge, corner, or ledge corner. <laughs> so on that ledge corner, if uh, if b bird, um, bats attack you, what normally happens on a ledge when, when bats attack you, you will drop down, but the prince will still grab the ledge, like he will hang on the ledge, you can get back up and continue. If you're on the corner, uh, the prince will drop down immediately because he cannot grab a corner. Like he can go around a corner but you cannot stop at a corner. So the prince will drop down. Um, this can kill a run. <laughs> because the next check checkpoint after the last one is coming up in 20 seconds, 15-20 seconds. So you really want to be careful to not die by these bats. Yeah, this time loss is because of my nervous movement. Um, there's no, yeah, no real time loss. No, not because I failed something. Um, but the movement in PB was really good. Actually, the three last splits were gloss. That's the only reason why this uh, this got PB back then. So this is the Yolo bat strat. Which is not as YOLO as it sounds. Um, but only if you know what to do. Um, how it basically works, like it's a cool little spread. But you uh, you have to know what, what to do. Um, this warren was too much to the right, so the prince didn't grab the pole. <laughs> Auto aim is not always your bitch. <laughs> if you're just sucking dick. Okay. Um, yeah, the YOLO bats thing, like the bats in the last tower are pretty aggressive, as you probably know, or as you maybe know from playing casually. But, um, if you slash them when they're not, uh, not surrounding you, like a good amount of time before that, if you slash them, they will not attack you and not throw you down the ladder. And... The strat only works if you kill the bats at the top point of a ladder. Because then they will not block your jump or not let you drop down during the jump. And you can continue normally. So yeah, but uh, up here we already passed another checkpoint like down here loses 10 seconds. Maybe 15 this would still be uh, sti still be self 30. But yeah, being careful is not the worst thing. Also, down there at on the right side is was another checkpoint. Like at an additional other checkpoint. There's so many checkpoints up here, it's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, now all the platforming is done. There are two fights left. Uh, a final fight and after that that's that's supposed to be a boss fight, but it's not. <laughs> like not at all. If even if like we're not skipping it, we're doing it casually. <laughs> uh, in n percent you're skipping the this last boss fight, which is none. And this fight right here is the only one in any percent, the only one you're actually doing. Because the zip teleportation glit 
Glitch. Es uh, gibt so much shit. It's insane. Fabian, nein! Say she does, no one cares. Should be emotional and shit, and I'm not. I'm not even touched. <laughs> Because Ferris. The reason of so much bullshit in Zipless. That every Zipless runner is happy when she dies here. <laughs> Even if she comes back for the next run, but who the fuck cares? Okay, the strat for this last uh, for this last fight are blocking <laughs> and uh, torpedoing. And sometimes, as you saw here, sometimes you can slash the enemies without torpedoing them. Most of the time, they will block you, as you saw here. Uh, but torpedoes are always hitting them. Like if uh, now uh, they're always killing them. Like if you if the torpedo is hitting the enemy and auto aim is not screwing you over, the torpedo will always kill the enemy. Nice double kill, to triple kill. Nice. Didn't realize the fight was this, this sick. Um. Yeah, as, as you can maybe tell, I was counting the seconds. <laughs> Because as you can see, minus 218 is my split at the moment. For sub 130, I need minus 144. This fight is not going like it's going good, but not super good. NPB had a glot here. So, I cannot lose more than 34 seconds. On the last split. Uh, if you don't die on the l on this fight, that that's basically it. Like your fight will never be so bad if you don't die, and um, that it loses 34 seconds. So at this point, it was, it was, yeah, step 130 was actually clear. Okay, last boss is the Vizier, the actual main enemy, like the villain of this game. In the run, you never saw him. <laughs> like in the speedrun, at this point, you don't know who the fuck he is and what the fuck he wants. So at this point, uh, because you, in the cinematic, you rerun all the shit that happened. You had, you still have your si moon tanks and your dagger, but everything else is rewinded. So you can power attack him here. Uh, the Vizier has three stages before you can kill him. The first one, you're mega freezing. Um, what you can do it saves two, three seconds. You can mega freeze the last stage, the third of his stages. Because after the Vizier copy or the Vizier imposter dies, and um, after that, your last mega freeze teleport slash can go towards the Vizier, and you don't have to walk. Towards him manually. The a risky thing is if the vizier wrecks you at the first or second threat, so that you have to rewind once. This is not likely to happen, but if it happens, you can't kill his last stage. Uh, yeah, you, you cannot mega freeze his last stage. You can, of course, kill it. But you can mega freeze his end. This then loses quite some time. This is what I mean. If he's constantly blocking. Which is normally not the case if you're jumping over him, sword, sword, jumping, sword, sword, jumping, sword, sword. Um, he will normally not hit you to death and sometimes not hit you at all. So I'm mega freezing on the first of the th three Vizier cycles. Loses two seconds, but it's more consistent. That's what I was trying to point out the whole run. The. The. Yeah, the relation between consistency, but you have to accept little time losses, and two seconds is not that much. Um. So yeah. yeah. The only thing left in this run is killing the vizier with four hits. And when we did the last hit, the time will stop. Three, two, one. Zero. And that's it. 
Sub 130, we're done. Um, thanks a lot for watching this post comment uh, world record video. If you have any questions, ask them uh, in the comments, I guess. And yeah, that was any percent the plus.